Hello friends, welcome back once again this week to Come Share the Joy. I thank you for tuning in. I thank you for all your encouragement. But most of all, I thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that's given me this opportunity to share my thoughts, to share the joy of my salvation with you. Um, we have so much to be thankful for today. It's, it's cold here. It's not snowing today. Boy, did we get dumped on the last week and week before. But it's nice here. It's uh, about 32 right now, which is better than zero, right? Uh, the snow is gone. A few flurries yesterday, but all is well right here in the state of West Virginia. But I love all the seasons. I, I love spring. Spring is new life. And then we have summer and we'll be complaining because it's too hot. But right now, we're going to sit here in this brisk evening and talk about the goodness of God because He is good and His mercy endureth forever. And I want to thank my sponsors at Old Hilliard Plumbing. And that's Old Hilliard Plumbing in Columbus, Ohio. And the number is 614-440-5787. Again, that's 304-777-9230. There's two numbers. But I thank God for them that uh, they, they sponsor Come Share the Joy. I thank God for Branson Gospel Television. That's my avenue of getting out to you and to the world. Uh, it's on Roku, on YouTube, and you can always find it on my Facebook. Maybe not until the next morning, but it's always there. But I thank you for tuning in. But I just want to start sharing the Word of God because His Word is, is so... It is feast on it. You know, I was talking with Pastor... Panther Anthony before service since Sunday. Bishop, sorry. Um, he's my pastor. He's a bishop. But I was speaking with him before service and uh, we were talking about the call on our lives and we were talking about, you know, we're called from our mother's room. Jeremiah 1 and 5 says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. He knew you. He knew me. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee, and I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. He had a purpose for each and every one of us. He had a call on our life when he formed me in my mother's womb. And, and when, and when uh, Bishop said that, I thought back about my mother. Uh, I was a twin, and he passed when we were born. He was three days old. The doctors came in and they told my mom and dad that the little girl isn't going to make it. And I know it's hard for you to believe this, but they carried me around for the first couple months on a pillow. I was so tiny. And look at me now. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I was very small. And they kind of told them that I was not going to make it because I was so small. But, you know, God had a plan for me. I really believe that with all my heart. He's got a plan for you, too. My twin, uh, his lungs weren't fully developed. He was good size, but the lungs weren't fully developed, so he um, he passed. And, you know, now the neonatal unit, they could take care of that, and he would have been along by my side, I'm sure. Um, but we all are called from our mother's womb. And we sat there and talked about this, and then Sunday morning the children got up at the beginning of the service. Once a month they get up and do a, a little portion of the service. And there was a little girl, and her name is Sadie. Sadie, if you're watching, you did a remarkable job. Sadie is about eight years old, and she simply got up, no tracks, no one played the piano, and she said, Mary, did you know that your baby boy? And she began to sing, Mary, did you know? And the anointing on this eight-year-old child is, it just wows you. She sings it with all of her heart. And I thought back about the times when I was a little girl and I sang my first solo in a church. And the Bible says to train up a child in Proverbs 22 and 6. Train up a child in the way it should go and when it grows old, it won't depart. Train that child. 
even though your children right now, they may be totally going the wrong way. But God made a promise to you, my friend. And that's where we can apply the blood of Jesus when we pray for our children to convict them, to change them, to let them open their eyes and see. Before they do like uh, uh, the prodigal son and they go the wrong way and they end up where they never dreamed they'd be. But you know what? God is right there in the midst of it to get them out. To bring them out. Um, I'm hoping to get, um, you know, I, I did a lot of work with, with recovery uh, when I was in Charleston with Women's Recovery and uh, Mariah. Mariah now lives in Alabama doing great. She got her son back. She was had, had got her son taken away due to drugs. And her testimony is absolutely beautiful. We're going to try to get together. I don't know if it'll be by restream or or how but i want to interview her an amazing woman of god she now is is an, a coach and she encouraged ladies and she helps them build businesses and and god's just using her she was called from her mother's womb but she said she found herself laying naked in the floor of a dirty bathroom and she was fainting she had needed a fix. And she had been prostituting herself out. She found herself laying there. And she cried out to God. And she said when she woke up, she was in prison. And she said, everybody like, oh, prison. No, she said, that was my, that was my rescue. Prison was my rescue. When you can look at it like that, you know, parents are like, oh, I don't want him to get in trouble. I don't want to get, that may be where he finds Jesus or she. That's where Mariah found him. But God has a plan for each and every one of us. And as little Sadie stood there and sang that song and my mind went back and, and I hadn't got up to sing yet, but I thought about when I was a little girl and I thought about now. You know, we think we're old and seasoned and, and, you know, ministers. And we just think we just, all that, we're nothing. Nothing. We are nothing. We are instruments. Simply instruments. Just like, just like this little tablet. It's an instrument for me to use. And I thought about little Sadie, and I thought about myself, how that God looks down at me. I said, when I'm standing up here, God is looking down at me just like we were looking at Sadie. He sees a little girl. He sees one of his children. <laughs> my, my, my. When we think we have arrived in ministry, or when we think we have arrived in our life, my friend, you're ready for a fall. Listen to him. Listen to his guidance. He will, he will guide you. But he said in, in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, how does that happen, Debbie? How do I listen to God? He said, if my people, which is you, my friend, which are called by my name, which are called Christians, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Hello, are you getting this? Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Well, now, we are in a shape, aren't we? The United States, the world, not only the United States, but we are in a mess. Why? And I know we don't want to hear this, but Christians, we've dropped the ball. Just like I said last week, we're so divided, we can't come together. But he said, if my people, my people, which are called by my name, you call yourself a Christian, that you shall humble themselves. Humble yourself. How do you do that? 
oh my goodness, you go before God and you cry out to him and he will hear you. And he will help you and he will lead you and he will guide you and get in the word. Hang out with people who love Jesus. And pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then, he said, then I will heal. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. I'm looking for stirring. I'm looking for healing. Speaking of, I spoke to a friend. Uh, I requested prayer on here and I requested prayer on my Facebook for my friends uh, Dee and Larry. Larry got very ill. Uh, August the 14th, Larry was, was, was sick and he went into the hospital and there's something going on with the pancreas and he, they were in the hospital from August the 14th until almost New Year's. Mm -mm -mm. The man was in ICU the majority of that time. But Larry is doing better. Stronger every day. Doesn't have to go back to the doctor for two weeks. And they said he'd have to go every week. And he'd have to have the strain. This is after he came back. He got septic. He, you name it. It happened. But God heard the cry of his people. If my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. Well, heal their land, they'll heal our bodies too. But we have got to seek him, my friends. We have got to come together and we have got to seek his face. So Larry did this and he's just stronger every day. I just talked to Dee and she's just, Real giddy about it. I mean, they're seeing the miracle take form right in front of them. Of course, he's still weak because he was down for August, September, October, November, December. That's a long time. O over four months. But he's doing good. And Larry, you're going to, he's going to come on and give his testimony. My word, I cannot wait for that. But I enjoy listening to other people's stories. So we're going to hear from him. But Dee said a, a friend of theirs, a minister friend of theirs, stopped by today at their house and said that they were in a revival. And they were ministering in the, the pastor of that church. They were doing an altar service and they were praying for people. Fell, oh, he fell over into their arms and, and died. And they said this man was dead for 40 minutes. 45. 45 minutes he was dead. Everybody in the church began to pray. Said that church people were praying. And that pastor held on to him until the ambulance got there. The ambulance got there and they were pronouncing him dead. I mean, taking him to the hospital to do so. And they were putting him in the ambulance, my friend. And he opened his eyes. They took him to the hospital and they said, well, it's possibly a stroke. They checked him out. They found nothing. Absolutely nothing. This man was dead. That, my friend, is a miracle. Oh, Debbie, that died with a... No, it didn't. No, it didn't. The church sat down and died on it. We can call on his name. He said, call on him while he may be found. If you have lost, if you have sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church and let them come and anoint them with oil. Now, they, she bring a prayer cloth from that service and gave it to Dee and, and Larry for him to wear. My good, we're going to start seeing this. I, you know, you may call me crazy if you want, but we are going to start seeing some miracles happen in this world. We're about to see a big one. I've had a thought on my mind for months and months and months. But God, I don't know if it's a song. I hear a lot of people saying, but God. You know, when he did the Red Sea, here they were up against that sea. But God delivered the children of Israel. And he's going to deliver America. Because we are the United States. We are united as one. We've got to unite. Christians, unite. Agree to disagree. Sure, we all have our differences. But agree to disagree. 
I was uh, had stopped by and visited my mother's oldest friend. Nellie is 94. And I, I said, she's very well read and very well learned in, in the Bible. And she's a, scholar, she's a scholar of the Bible. That's what she does all the time. I feel like I'm sitting at her feet gleaning of her. And, and we just talked about the goodness of God. And we, and we talked about this. If we just come together and we believe, we're going to see great things. We are going to see great things. Romans 12 and 2 says this. And be not conformed to this world. You are different. Don't go acting like the world. We are different. There comes a time. You know the children of Israel were fed manna. They were they stayed warm at night in the desert. It gets very cold at night. I don't care how hot it may be. 120 in the day. At night it's cold. They had a fire by night to keep them warm in the sky. And a cloud by day to keep the sun off them. God provided and fed them manna. Well, what's manna? That's what the Bible says. What is it? That's what they said. What is it? Little white things. All the vitamins and nutrition they need. You know, we got all this protein stuff and all this nowadays, but hey, that was the stuff back then. Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind transformed now you know my little grandson abel he is six and he is the apple of my eye and that little booger listen he loves superheroes and transformers and you know it's it's those cars that you push a button i never can figure out how to get them back together if he wants me to play my boys had them too and i never could figure that out but you put them back together and it turns into a vehicle but when you open it up it will be a it transforms into like a robot. But here he says, But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, our mind, our eye gates are right here. What we see here goes into here. That's what we believe. It's true. Get in the Word. Open your eyes to the Word of God. Start believing what He said. By the renewing of your mind. We have got to be renewed, friends. We have got to renew our minds. We we think about our jobs. We think about our insurance. We think about... I had a situation of thinking about giving up my insurance. I got a gold card. My husband was United Mine Workers, and we have excellent insurance. But to think of getting rid of that, what's well, scary? Because I'd pay nothing. But you know what? If that day comes, God will take care of me. I am sure he's going to take care of Debbie. You can bank him on that. I'll bank on it. That ye may be proved what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. By the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Church, Christians, and be not conformed to this world. Don't let this world dictate to you. All, they, all this news and all this mess and the country. You know, I don't even watch the news anymore. Because who do you believe? They all have something different to say. I go on YouTube, go online, and I listen to who I want to, who I trust. And that's okay. You know, if you trust CNN or Fox or whoever, you go right ahead. I trust men and women of God that listen to his voice. And be not conformed to this world, the way this world thinks. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Mm -mm -mm. The perfect will of God is when we just yield ourselves and say, Father, I'm yours. Sometimes it's scary. There have been times I'm like, oh my. 
but he's always there. He never fails me. He'll never fail you. Friend, trust him. Take him at his word. Renew your mind. Be transformed. Be changed. Be changed. Let the mind be changed in Christ because he is our hope. In these last days, he's our only hope. The spirit filled. We have to be spirit filled to withstand what's coming ahead of us. I believe that with all of my heart. But God will take care of us. Watch what he does because he loves you. I'm going to share a song. Who is he? He is. Who are you? You are is the name of it. I co-wrote this song. And it's a beautiful song about who God is and then who he is to me. And we'll be right back. From the start of time You spoke this world into place You formed the ocean The winds and the waves And you placed the sun High on display Creator of all know each of us by name. You are the beginning and the end. And you are my Savior, my friend. You are my My peace with me, and when I speak your name, you're always right there. You're everything I need. You are in my darkest moments. It was you. Rescued me. You grabbed my heart, held me tight, said you would never leave. Through every heartache and every trial and in between, you are more than enough. Lord, you're my.
because that's who he is. He is our you are. That kind of sums it up. How the, sometimes I'm trying to express myself about the goodness of God in there. There are no words. That's like that, but God. You are. He is anything we need him to be. He said here in Isaiah 55, 6 and 7, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he's near. There's going to come a day that it's too late to call out. The Bible says the rock, they'll cry out for the rocks to hide him. No, to fall on him. No. Seek him while he may be found. You know, time's running out and, I, and everybody's, oh, I've heard that all my life. Well, it has run out for a lot of people. He's came back. Do not wait any longer. Ask Jesus into your heart to be your Lord and Savior. Number seven says, let the wicked forsake their ways. Change your ways. And let the righteous man their thoughts. Oh, when I can hear people say, well, if you knew so-and-so and they say they're a big Christian, they do this or that. Don't worry about them. Worry about you. You know, back when you were a kid, your mom would say, you just do what you're supposed to do. I said, you do this. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the righteous man his thoughts. Hmm. He didn't leave us up. The righteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. And, our, and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. He will pardon you. The thief hanging there right beside Jesus the day that he was crucified. He looked over at Jesus. And he asked him to forgive him. And he said, today, you will be with me in paradise. Because he repented right there, hanging on the cross. Probably bleeding. Had been beaten. Jesus said, no, he had been beaten. And he said, remember me. And he said, today you will dwell with me in paradise. Friend, that's all you got to do. Ask him to come in and be your Savior. Mark 8 and 36 says this, For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul or her soul? What does it gain you to profit this world? Now, we see that that's a lot of the problems in Washington, D.C. and in our country and in big corporations that, Everybody has a price on their head. Sad to say. My word. Jesus paid it all. And he paid it in full. What does it profit you if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? Mm -mm. God help us. Father, we thank you that as we close out, maybe you've dealt with a heart, tugged at their hearts, and they want to say yes to you, but they keep putting it off. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow's another day. One day there'll be no more tomorrows, and it'll be too late, my friend. I pray tonight you find him sweet to your soul. I thank you, Father, that you minister to each and every heart that's listen. If they don't know you, let them see they need a Savior. We pray. It's all you got to do is ask Him. You believe in the birth, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He will forgive you. He will pardon you. He will pardon you. Forgive you. Call on Him. If you need prayer, call me. 304-687-3579. I have a prayer team ready to pray. Doesn't matter what time it is, we'll be praying. You can email me at Deborah, D E B R A D D, at suddenlink, S U D D E N L I N K dot net. You can find me on social media. God, find somebody. Just you and Jesus. That's all you need. And ask Him to come in and be your Savior. Friends, it's been good to be with you tonight. I love him with all my heart. 
But I always like to see myself as that little girl, that little Sadie on stage singing and God looking down at me like I am his little girl. I will always be his little girl and you will always be his son. Thank you, Father, that you love us that much and you train us. How do you train us? I said, train up a child in the way it should go. When it grows old, it won't depart. Get in your word. Get in the word. And there's training in there. It tells you what to do and how to handle situations. But you got to get in there to find it. Until next week, God bless you. And go out there and share the joy of your salvation with someone.